Uh, who are you again? Um, <laughs> damn you, Bo Ransdell. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome. To... Oh, damn you, Bo Ransdell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's good to come in on you cursing my name. Like, uh, to be honest, it's hard not to. Um, the amount of times I curse it, so let's try to find the gaps in between. Yeah. True story. Yeah. So, um, what is the right. show called it's called duncan and Bo come correct <laughs> yeah um it certainly is uh so duncan we have yes. we have been away a little bit largely uh because of the lord uh, the lord like did you find your calling i went on <laughs> You've a, been missionary work uh, yes i was on a pilgrimage <laughs> um no we just we we kind of took a break like both of us have been kind of busy and as yep. i was telling you before we start recording and uh for the listeners who may or may not know like i'm going back to school the this semester i'm right now this, I, I, like i was telling duncan th this very day that we are recording this i am now officially taking classes again and Bo having is, to Bo is going to be a mind molder yeah i'm going to be a licensed teacher what do you think about that and <laughs> deal with that yeah rep don't don't dig up the many many hours that might get his teaching license revoked of the airwaves for both said controversial shit yeah i when have i ever said anything controversial duncan never happened never happened never so happened. yeah so i'm i'm in the process of doing that and in the process of doing that here's some shit oh um, here the wall oh man corner springing it nowhere i got whiplash <laughs> Like, uh, if this is not a bad thing, it's just one of those things where I feel like, damn it. Well, like I grew up at completely the wrong time, mm -hmm. um, except for all the cool things that happened when I was growing up, yeah. but, <laughs> um, you know, like the eighties horror movies and new wave music, uh, as we will 100%. get into in a moment, but regardless, so I'm taking a class. I have to, I've got a couple of general ed requirements that I got to get out of the way. One of them is a, a survey of American history class. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just uh, chapter one guns uh, yep. is the name of it. But, <laughs> but what's funny about it is when it came time, I was like, oh, well, what textbook do I need to buy? That's got to be $7,000 like all textbooks are. And uh, they were like, oh, no, it's all, it's this open source history book. It's totally free. You just download the PDF on the internet. And I was like, what? Like, when did this what? happen? And they were like, oh, yeah, well, the digital age has apparently changed textbooks dramatically. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people that just upload them. Right. It's very like, yeah, it's very difficult to police that. <laughs> well, and, and, like, this is the teacher, or the professor of the class saying, like, oh, no, this is just, like, it is a... It is a project by historians to create an open source American history textbook. And so just download it and that's what we're using and it's all free. And kind of cool. it, it was cool, but also it was like, man, I remember. You had the pain of remember to spend hundreds of dollars on yeah. things you used for a couple of months and yeah. then you had to hawk back. Going through college bookstores with like one of those hand baskets filled with like biology textbooks and stuff. And going to the counter and they're like, oh yeah, that textbook is $135. Yeah. And when you, <laughs> when it, you sell it, it back. In, is it written in gold? <laughs> right. And when you sell it back, it's going to be 17 hot American yeah. dollars in your pocket. Yeah. Easy. Anyway. 17 but, and then they just put it back out again at $100. Right. And they sell um, it used for, yeah. Exactly. This is why I like, at college I studied uh, music and audio production. So my coursework was buying albums literally what i did for two years was i just bought music like shit loads of music under the guise of uh of learning the the secret black magic arts of recording music which obviously i've used to great success in my producing career working with such acts as oh that's right no one right. um so yeah but, but i just i spent all my money on cds which, to be honest, I would have done it anyway, regardless. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, most degrees are kind of useless. Like, it, it, honestly, I think that you should not be expected to go to, to college until you know what the hell you're going to do with yourself. I think, the thing is, I think, as a barometer for 
employers, it shows that you are willing to dedicate yourself for a prolonged period of time to something. Even if that's sure. not necessarily like something that becomes of practical use, it does show dedication to it. And if I was an employer, someone, be, even if it was an apprenticeship, someone that is prepared to have spent time dedicating themselves to be seen as being responsible um, and putting the work into whatever that field is, is someone I would elevate probably over someone that doesn't have a, a great track record, maybe job jumped like seven times in the last year. You know, it's, it's that sort of level. I don't think it, you know, it's not a, it doesn't give you carte blanche to be an expert in anything. In fact, sometimes college and university gives you just, a, just enough knowledge to make you a pain in the ass. Um, so that's been my experience yeah. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> who is this young cunt um that's like that's literally me every day now when i meet someone like who like what, what the company i recently started work with has like intakes of graduates um all the time and they're they're all there with their their 25 letters after their name and all the rest and i'm like i don't have any of those letters and i'm above you uh so like <laughs> you want to know how i got here sheer force of will I, like, like, I learned the hard way. I so failed then, upwards. I feel, and I continue to fail upwards and will continue from this point onwards. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And so it, it feels weird that we've been away as long, but at the same time, I, f I kind of feel like post slasher, we needed a break. <laughs> we, I, right. We both just needed a breath. Like there was, there was some other stuff to do. And also it's just like, all right, we're about to launch into yet another giant project. Yep. Uh, that yep. is going to take months and months to take care of. <laughs> so yeah. let's just, and if you don't, if you don't like it early on, it's going to be a long, fucking, it's going to be a long run I'm, for you. You friend. know, but, but I'm looking forward <laughs> to it because it's stuff I haven't seen. And I would yeah. rather watch something that I don't enjoy that I haven't seen. than. Yeah, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Then something I don't right. enjoy that I have seen, maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Uh, let's let's go with that. I seem to be educated. So. Sure, but but yeah. as a bit of a, a an aperitif, a, a, like the palate cleansing sorbet Ooh. between projects. Ooh, we have been uh, working our way through some of these uh, Duran Duran albums. It's really the only thing that got me through the last year and a half a slasher. I'll, let's be honest. Is that it was the it was the the tasty treat for yeah. us um, that we got at the end. It was the it was the pat on the head, the the dog treat, and the good boy mm -hmm. uh, for for finishing a season of slasher. So yeah, we are continuing that, and I'll just be honest, we are going to continue this um, like right through. This is something that I want to do until they no. Duran Duran albums left. So. Yeah, it, it's really fun, and it it's been fun to dig into the album we're gonna do uh, today. Which oh, this is one's a, this one's an absolute peach. This one is like I this is this is almost th th this pretty much is their funk album, and that's that's why yeah. I smile from ear to ear. So right, it, it, this uh, notorious could just be called Duran Duran finds brass. Yeah, yeah, and. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that's to do with the personnel changes, but we'll get into it. Yes. But, um, uh, oh, the snare drum, the snare drum sound gets me erect. By the way, I fucking love the drumming on this album. We we should probably say up front. Okay, so this is now Roger and Andy Taylor are gone. Yeah, they they all had like they to, to put people in the picture. They did they did. I mean, it wasn't a huge amount of time between albums. It's about two years, but wow. in that time period, they did tour the world and then start doing other things as bands will want to do. Um, especially considering they all came from kind of proggy backgrounds. You know, the, the more pop they got, the more they were like, "Right, we're going to do this," but the, I need to get I need to get what I want out somewhere else. So they all started doing side things, and then. To be honest, when they all came back together to do another pop album, um, some of them weren't really in that mindset anymore. And so the drummer and guitarist uh, took a small hiatus for for a little while. And um, I mean, I, I, I mean, they brought in these nobodies. Um, I lie. Um, they brought in like like just an incredibly accomplished session guitarist. And he's on right is like very famous. So the producer on this album who does actually play guitars on Notorious itself. Kyle Rogers um, is the guy's name, yeah. 
Yeah, he's the, well, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And the drummer has like if you ever get a chance to like the drummer is fucking amazing. If you ever get a chance to check out his like his discography of bands that he worked with as a session drummer, is dizzying. Um, like really, so they, they kind of almost were like, oh no, we're so sad to see you go. What's this? Better musicians. <laughs> um and you will hear on this. This one to me is like he, we talked about how the last one sounded polished and refined. This one is a huge step up in pop quality. Like the attention to detail in the recording on this is fucking astounding. And as a result, all the other little nuances somehow get better. <laughs> like it's weird, it's weird to say. And I'm not hating on the original members. I'm just saying the guitars are a bit more interesting on this. The drums are far more funky and succinct. And as a result, the synths seem more focused. The bass work is nuts on this mm-hmm. album. And even Simon, Simon Le Bon, this is about as good as he ever really gets vocally. Like, he tries some really good techniques. There aren't, on, on, on some of the previous albums, it was always like a naughty tech. And I would be like, oh, I don't know if that works. Um, on this one, it's all immaculate. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're in for a treat. What it doesn't have is, like five singles um mm-hmm. which is the which is the the kind of negative thing is it's predominantly led off maybe three songs which are like like powerhouse anthems but the rest of the songs super fucking interesting and i'm not using that in the interesting thing where you're like and did you like my chili duncan i'm like it's interesting <laughs> uh you know like which is giving nothing away as in like the music is really good so I, i'm looking forward to this bow all right, well, uh, here's how it works, as always. If you listen to the Legion Patreon, you're going to hear the full Monty. Where You're hear- going to hear what Gary Oldman screams. Everything! Right. Um, that's what you get to hear if you're on that Patreon. But, Bo, if they're not a Patreon member, and they could be if they wanted to, there's yes. nothing stopping them. Yeah, they what, just what? go to legionpodcast.com. No, oh, pa- uh, patreon.com forward slash legionpodcast. But if they're uh, not on that, they can still check out stuff. They just don't get the nipple tassels. Right. Save for that. Right. You're just not going to get the conversation that happens in between. Yeah, so. you're not going to get the music, right? Which is right. copyright. So we <laughs> don't want this pulled down. So, um, um, all right. So let's uh, let let's dig into it. The first track of the album, Notorious, is the song. No, no, notorious. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, no, So on the count of three, we will begin uh, this banger. Um, Oh, my, like, just all I'm going to say is, listeners, if you're out there, focus on the bass. The bass and the brass. It's the two Bs. Well, in fact, focus on the bass, the brass, and the bow. That's all you need to do for this track here. And you will be, you will be in throw. I fucking love this song. It, it's really good. So, uh, oh, all right, dude. here we go. Three, two, one. Notorious. Uh, oh, it just, it, oh. right. Just unending. Just stop. We're done. Um, oh. Yeah. So like, you know, we, we've talked before on these recordings about the art of an album. And this yep. is one of those cases where it's just like, oh, we're going to start guns blazing. Yeah. With... Best foot forward. Yeah. Oh, pretty much. I mean, it's, it, it, and there is, like you, mean, like you mentioned when we were talking over the track, there, there is that, there is that kind of, there's new people in the band. There's kind of almost like an injection of new life. That's what happens whenever new musicians come into a project. I mean, this is still predominantly the three original members pushing the songs creatively and you know and writing a lot of the parts but then you have like great session musicians that are coming in the drums like one one aspect i didn't talk about too much like the drum sound in in general is fucking incredible specifically the snare drum which is a very funk snare drum um but on top of that he is a like accomplished session drummer so as a result of that everything is immaculate this guy could play much more complicated stuff than he's doing, but he's like, you know, like, let's fit this in, let's get it right, let's get it solid, and he delivers a, like a, a very stalwart performance. If you're a drummer in a band, like as informed that band, I think on some level there's always like every member of a 
a band that has formed a band together feels like they should constantly be trying to show how great a musician they are. <laughs> session musicians are not that. Session musicians actually plug in to what the band needs as opposed to trying to excel at anything. And as a result of that, you tend to find that the backbone, which is the drums and the bass and any music, the drums and the bass have to work together in that capacity. And then when you hear it, it's just... And it's such a catchy song. You said during the recording, it's, it is like... <laughs> without like, leaning into it it's notoriously Duran Duran sound it's, the, it's from the textbook formula of how to do a Duran Duran single and guess what That even at this stage we're a couple of albums and that still works that still works really well mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's it, it's a like you said it's a terrific foot forward it, mm. it, it I mean it's the most listened to song on this album it is it yep. was their big hit off of this album like nothing nothing else even came close yeah. to notorious and that opening that no no notorious <laughs> like that will get you going that's all you oh, yeah. need to to kind of kick not just this album off but like if you want to kick off a duran duran playlist yeah. start with notorious yeah and people are yep. going to be like who <laughs> surprisingly named after the alfred hitchcock movie of the same name is it really i didn't i didn't yeah. realize it was named after well, the, the yeah the well movie. they also have a they have a track on here called vertigo as well which is named after the alfred hitchcock movie <laughs> yeah they do and uh, they al almost according to trivia out there in the wilds they uh -huh. almost had a track called the rope as well oh so. that would have been good uh i i prefer meet el presidente which was not um <laughs> A, a Hitchcock movie, but it's no. a fucking great song. It's um, also it's also the great the greatest name ever for a Mexican restaurant. If oh, meat spell M E A T, yeah. uh huh. You know what I mean? Would that meat be El Presidente? Ooh. Wouldn't that just be Carne El Presidente? I, but I mean, it would be, but it wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> en enough of our restaurant business. We need a lot more cocaine. To talk about opening yeah. a restaurant together. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> First you get the podcast, then you get the restaurant, then you get the power. I love uh, it, bro. I love it. So, so the next track is American Science. To blinded me with science. Different science. Song. <laughs> um, this one is the the true like trio. Yeah. Of of uh Duran Duran at this point, which is Simon LeBon, vocals, mm -hmm. lyrics, Nick Rhodes on the keyboards, John Taylor playing bass. Yes. And That's then poetry in motion. I've got that in my song, the fucking Thomas Danny Thomas Dolby. All right. Whatever you are. Let's let's uh try to replace it with American science. American science. On... Well, isn't that isn't that like isn't American science basically disavowing creation? It? Like, I mean, it's like, it was all God. It's flat it. earth. It's, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can I, can I just say, time. do you like American science? <laughs> I like American science. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sure. You want a little violent film so this episode? You're going to get oh, it. We, yeah, you went out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Out of fucking nowhere, ladies and gents. That's not what this song sounds like, though. Oh. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I, part of my wishes it was. All right. Let's uh, let's di uh, dive into this one. On the count of three. Three, two, one. American Science. I'm trying to think. It, maybe this and and so misled are probably the two that I'm like, eh, they're fine. You know, yeah, but even I, I would say that even when you listen to it, though, those those moments that you would get on American Science on other albums always sounded a bit shaky, mm -hmm. a bit flaky. And on this, it doesn't sound like that at all. It, it sounds actually surprisingly kind of well constructed. Yeah, and actually more refined than it probably should. In the past, it would have indulged. A little bit more or a, a little bit longer of a track and it would ultimately kind of fall apart um and then this one it's not a particularly long song at all i mean it is longer <laughs> than the single um 
but it's not like six or seven minutes. Like we're not getting the night train, bro. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, do you mean the night bus? The night bus, sorry. Yeah, the night, the night train would have got us into the station quicker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, but it's funny because I was thinking about when I was listening to this record that it gets a little freewheeling on the back end what? of it, but you don't have the prog rock anthem. Yeah. That yeah, you yeah. do on on the earlier records, and I kind of missed that one song that was like, "This is clearly just them dicking around." Yep. Yeah. There's also a part of me that feels that I, I, you know, I like the idea that it's not there as well because that was always inherently the sound of the band, mm. you know. And then you've got two key, like re regardless what Le Bon was doing, like you've got two key members of that group not there anymore. Um, so you know, to, to try and replicate that, even with ses like accomplished session musicians, to try and replicate that, I don't think you would have the same impact. So I kind of like that they are they are still experimenting with that without necessarily trying to recreate it. If you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a weird placement. Like the, the problem with Notorious overall is that it really it has arguably one of their best pop songs on it, and actually a whole lot of filler um and this is still like this is album four yeah, yeah yeah and we're already we're already hitting that and it's the story of duran duran they got to a certain point where they were like all we need is two songs off this album to add to the tour and that's it you know we'd like we don't need anything like all, all we're doing now is writing singles shoving them in albums and the singles are all we'll play live and the other songs in there, yeah, we had fun when we were recording them. Yeah, it was great to experiment and get funky, but we're never touching these live. And when they did, that's one of the things that kind of makes them interesting. When they've, they've reformed over the years and played these live tours, they will always bring a bizarre one out. Like, a, like they, you know, they reach in and bring them in. And there's about three people in the audience that are like, oh, I never thought this day would come and Everyone else is like, play Notorious. Um, right. so, and then there's that one guy that's like, American science. <laughs> it was the first dance at my song. Yeah. Uh, first dance at my wedding, not my first dance at my song. So the first dance at my song, bro. When I wrote a song, I danced to this. Um, I don't even know what's <laughs> happening right now. That's how I off. I, I like. I, I'm. I'm hankering for some skin trade, which could also be the name of our Mexican restaurant. I think skin trade would be our pork rind company. Oh, right. Man, I like a pork rind. Uh, good pork rinds never gonna steer you wrong i mean until that first cardiac arrest yeah <laughs> um okay but all right so here's the thing about skin trade we talked about the falsetto yes that simon Lombon adopts for this which i really like i like him just going he, for he this crazy nails it as yeah. well he said surprisingly good so um, it was not a big hit hit when it was released as a single which is yep. kind of understandable because it's kind of weird uh to yes. be sure um <laughs> and uh the it, the title is drawn from the book adventures in the skin trade by uh dylan thomas mm -hmm. and it, based on what we were talking about it this is kind of apropos that the song uh you know simon Lebon is always a little bit obscure in, in when, when it comes to his lyrics but yeah. uh the idea behind it is that it's it's really about um like selling your soul selling your art for success yeah you know that you're you're basically trading like you were talking about like you know here are two singles and then here's the other stuff and and it seems to be like simon lebon saying like well the other stuff is what matters you know like yeah right writing a single just because you can doesn't make it art and yeah. um that's what the label wants that's right. that's what you trade off for that's what you trade off as being a musician on a label is that you have to give something that the label can market and make money off of and the rest of the album's kind of yours you know what i mean yeah. and, but even more so today like like duran duran if duran duran had formed today um i i think the, that kind of idea of how they approached albums that aesthetic works a lot better now than it did even back then is the idea that all you need to do is be able to do like one or two singles to, you know, get all the interest in there. People pre-order the album. Um, and then when it drops on the day of release, I mean, they can jump the like, and listen to music. People, it's the one thing I review music on, on other platforms 
And the thing that I've realised <clears throat> over time is that gone are the days of like a single comes out ahead of the album and then the album drops. Nowadays, like when you pre-order an album on whatever platform it is, the, the album might be 10 songs long, but it's not uncommon to have heard five singles before the album drops. So you've heard that like half the album already out of context and then the album drops. Um, and it's interesting how many times my opinion has shifted on having heard those five songs and I really like the direction of it. Then I hear the five songs I haven't heard and I'm actually like, this is not a good album. Mm -hmm. because of those songs in between or the other way around i've heard those five songs out of context i'm like what are they doing in this third single but then when i hear the songs either side of it on the actual release i'm like oh no this totally makes sense you know th th this is now contextualized in a way where it sounds a hundred times better than it was before back then it was like here's what this is a single for the album that's upcoming album drops here's your next two singles or three and then we're touring forever and these things are dropping in line with where we're touring and even then singles are released at different times like nowadays when a single drops is dropped at the same time everywhere in the world like movies should be but back then you know the singles would follow almost the tour you know so it would come out in america when they were doing their american tour and then japan it would maybe come out six months later in Japan because it would fall within the Japan tour because it's something you can market ahead of the band coming in. So it's just a different world. So I, I get his I get his vibe here. I also love the fact that like they don't half ass the singles though. Like the singles on this album are really fucking well written and they could because they have that formula. I've said it before. Like Notorious is like textbook Duran Duran, but it's like really fucking good textbook Duran Duran. It's easy to phone that shit in. We've heard it before and they don't do it. A uh, couple of other notes about Skin Trade before we launch into it. It uh, was somewhat influential on them as a band, or at least they drew a lot of, uh, of kind of business-related stuff from this song. Like, their publishing company is called Skin Trade Music. Didn't and there is a line in the song that goes, uh, or it's kind of the chorus, will someone please explain the reasons for this strange behavior and exploitation's name? We must be working for the Skin Trade. Mm. The the their tour for Notorious was called the Strange Behavior Tour, and when they did a double CD collection of remixes, they also did. Uh, they also titled that Strange Behavior. That to me sounds like this song means a lot more to them than. It's probably when that one didn't do well. That's probably why they were like, "Well, fuck you. <laughs> like, you get not another single now. You can all fuck yourself. We're mm -hmm. just gonna tour, do drugs, sleep with women, and then we'll come back in a couple of years with another album. And uh, it's all your fault." All right. Well, let's launch into the falsetto fueled. Oh, dude, joy. this is so much fun. Skid Trade's great. So anyway. Six I'll... minutes. Six minutes of bliss. Yeah. The, the next two songs are uh, like, we'll get into it, but they're they're the two longest on the album. Yeah. And yeah. one of them is like one for me. And the other was like one for <laughs> you. Uh, but we'll get to that. So uh, Skid Trade on the count of three. Three, two, one. Skid Trade. A, like a chat show band playing someone in <laughs> you know <laughs> it's it's really good skin trade one of the you know kind of unfortunately unsung duran duran yeah. songs as far as i'm concerned i think it's I think it's terrific i think skin trade rocks mm -hmm. uh, it's really it's really well it's really well written it's it, it's the what we mentioned before it's playful but at the same time, it all works. Like, you can be playful and... Well, I've heard it before. Duran Duran goes a bit playful, a bit experimental, and the end result is an interesting listen as opposed to a great listen. Skin Trade is a really well-written song. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really do anything exceptional either, but it holds my attention all the way through. It's got a very catchy chorus. The verse is really interesting, predominantly because of the vocals, but as, as minimalist and the... A kind of minimal, minimalist approach to the actual instrumentation itself. The bass isn't really doing anything huge. The drums aren't really doing anything huge. The, the brass section comes in and kind of almost steps and waves as accentuating things. And even the synths are kind of pulled back a little bit, which really lets Le bon do what he needs to do on the track. But 
the the actual use of that space is really well done. So you're getting little like licks on the guitar, and we're getting beefier sections with the horns without it being predominantly all the way through it. The previous song, American Science, there was almost like no room at all where there wasn't a synth playing. It was pretty much all the way right through it. And this one, it's all kind of composed in such a way where like that to me feels like producer involvement like we mentioned before producer sat down there and was like right this is how we structure this this is how we bring this bit in here it would sound really good if this came in because that's technically what you're paying a producer to do is they help you basically compose and construct your music you're writing the music but then they're piecing it together like a jigsaw to say well this is the best place for that and this would be better down here and and that's what it sounds like and that's why it works um as well as it does because it, to me that it's surprising it's a bit long for a single to be honest mm -hmm. um but to me it's like it's it's a great song it's a really 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 good song without doing all the things that notorious does which is from the textbook this doesn't feel like it's from the textbook and actually it sounds just as interesting so yeah i think that's one of the reasons i like it so much is it it feels you know uh, kind of playful kind of weirdly contemplative about mm. who they are as a band and where they're headed and like it's a you know because Duran Duran's kind of at an interesting crossroads on this record, and them kind of discovering like, well, we just don't have to be synth pop. We can also be kind of this weird funk band. Yeah, and it, they're still all the synth pop that you know and love, but you know, beneath it all, or maybe beside it all, is this other influence that they're really diving into and embracing, and mm -hmm. it's it's super fascinating. But all right, so. You know, I'm, I said this in the upfront to Skin Trade, but this is sort of like Skin Trade is the one for us, and then yep. the next single that they they put out is a matter of feeling. Yeah, and it feels very much like, well, here's one for you. This is a Duran Duran song. Yeah, and it's a good Duran Duran song, and it's kind of one of their big ballads before you get into sort of later Duran Duran stuff, uh, where mm -hmm. they just. You know, look, at, at some point we'll talk about Come Undone and, yep. and what a fucking amazing ballad that is. But, um, you know, this is sort of that, like, there's not a Wild Boys or Union of the Snake or some weird ass, you know, no. song like that. So A Matter of Feeling is kind of like, this is the mainstream pop ballad. Yeah, this to me, like, without, uh, like, trying to like A Matter of Feeling, you don't have Ordinary World. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean, it's kind of it's kind of setting the stage for, and if you go back through their back catalog as well, up until this point, not predominantly known for their ballads. Yeah, oh, a, a single was gold. Not. Yeah, like, no, no, the band that did Girls on Film, <laughs> mm -hmm. not necessarily known for, <laughs> in Rio. You know, not necessarily known for their their. Yeah, uh, only like those songs only four or five years ago. So yeah. they're not doing like the old man thing where they're like they're twenty years into their career and like. Need to write a ballad about my, all those loves that I lost when I was on the road. I'm right. not doing that. Like they're, they're still a relatively young band, and yeah, this is the this is the initial template for a ballad for them. So, yeah. So, uh, all right. Let's uh, on the count of three, three, two, one. Feel it. I'm covered in bees. Um, so <laughs> uh, but yeah, so <laughs> that's a matter of feeling. And I have feelings about Eddie Izzard's pronouns. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you'll only hear that if you check out the Patreon video. <laughs> yeah. Just, hey, you, hey, I'm, you know, I, I'm for whatever anyone wants to do with themselves yeah. and their life, but just don't make it a fucking challenge, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it some kind of litmus test. Like, I got you a moment. Like, ha ha! <laughs> you saw the suit, but you missed the heels. It's she. Yep. I'm like, ugh! <laughs> you got me again, Eddie Izzard. Damn you, Eddie Izzard! <laughs> um, <laughs> but so that's a better feeling, and if you miss the six minutes of us talking about why that song is, is kind of interesting in the grand scheme of yeah, it's interesting in that it, it really is a kind of Rosetta Stone for the ballads that we go into. It's them experimenting with something they weren't really doing beforehand. 
Um, and coming out with a very well written ballad with a really good mm-hmm. chorus, but it, it does kind of fart around a little bit too much in the middle. It's a bit too long. Um, and then you will know, like we said before, by the time you're getting to tracks like Ordinary World, which is a powered ballad song, oh. that is not six minutes long. You know that. what I mean? No, that, that like, song could be ninety seconds, and it would be everything you need. Exactly. Uh, that's like you know, it's it, it, it kind of feels like they're you know the. It's like you say. It's like the this is the one for the label because we're going to do something that you know should get the, like people will slow dance to this song, um, and it, at least I suppose they do. Um, but it's not it's not top tier. And also, it seems a little sad for that. Like that—that's like when yeah. people tell you that, like, "Oh, our song is every breath you take," and you're like, "What? That is yeah. horrifying." <laughs> is your movie Peeping Tom? What brought us together? Yeah, they've got a couple of really fucking creepy songs. Don't stand so close to me, is. Absolutely, and in twenty twenty two eyes, it's fucking yeah. horrific. Yeah, it is absolutely fucking horrific. That is a song about a teacher getting aroused by his students, right? And and her being the one that's like, oh, I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna. Yeah, well, well, well that's how the teacher. teacher. Yeah, but that's how yeah. the teacher perceives it. Sure, she's coming yeah, yeah. on to him. But well, it's, yeah, that. Yeah, it's a, the Nabokov real. thing, and and yeah. uh, but murder by numbers. Yeah, is <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, um, and, yeah, and I can't tell you the number of times I've made a stone of my heart, Duncan. Um, <laughs> the next, <laughs> by the but way, we're like, yeah, but we're jumping to hold me, and hold me kicks off hard. They're like, you've right, that's the, like this song ain't no fucking around. We're getting that rock snare hitting almost on the first beat. And uh, we're going to pick things back up because we're closing side one of this album if you had it on vinyl. So On uh, drums for this one. Yes. Steve Ferrone, mm-hmm. who you may know as the drummer for the Average White Band. Yes. Da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, you, if he's in the area and he can put some drums down, why not? I'm, all right. I like the fact that this has my favorite breakdown of the whole album. Mm-hmm. There, there is a breakdown on the back end of this song that's just like, why isn't this the whole song? This is the yeah. best thing ever. Anyway, uh, all right, let's <laughs> let's. Uh, I think we both enjoy. Whole you're closing out. You're closing out side one. Yeah, with something that makes the people want to come back. So. Absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's do Holdy. Three, two, one, Holdy. And that's you closing out what would have been nominally the first side of your vinyl, and then you would have switched over to your second side. Uh-huh. Um, which, I mean, like we mentioned before, deliberately starts off with a track named after a Hitchcock movie, mm-hmm. like the first side was. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we're back, unlike you know, Notorious, we're, we're still with our, our power trio here, yeah, yeah. And I, so I mean, like, like some uh, doing a summation for those that didn't hear us talk all over it. We like that song quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. If you missed it, "Hold Me" has again one of the great breakdowns of Duran Duran history. Yeah. And and it's yeah. fun. It's really it's it's catchy. It's got a great chorus. It's really fun. It's musically interesting. It's mm-hmm. lyrically interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, go to the Patreon just to hear our discussion of Simon LeBon's voice. Yeah, and over the years, and yeah, it's 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 super fascinating to me that you know, like he he is he's got such a distinct voice, and he just gets so playful with it on this record. For the time as well, there's a something about the eighties and pop, like pop singers had very unique sounding voices. Mm-hmm. You would you would struggle to tell the difference, like nowadays, between a lot of pop. Like voices, they all they're all in the same cadence. They all have the same kind of design, the the same inflections. But back in the eighties, pop singers sounded like you know, like uh, Boy George didn't sound anything like fucking like Simon Le Bon. And if you listen to the Human League, the Human League 
like their, their vocal, like the, the vocalists, even something like Tears for Fears or Spandau Ballet, like the the vocals that you do, like Tony Hadley. I mean, the big the, the like he doesn't sound to anything like Simon Le Bon. Um, yet they like those two bands in particular are compared a lot. Um, it's strange, and they, yeah. it's the very 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 distinctive sounds. And I think that's you know like you'd like you can like you said before you could play like. Uh, a five second clip of him singing anything out of context with no music in the background, you'd be like, that's Simon Le Bon. Mm-hmm. Like, straight away. So, you're all right, Bo. Which I'm is French that. for Simon the Good. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and if, if it was Simon Le Bon Bon, that's a tasty treat, Bo. Oh. Um, oh. Oh. Step aside, oh. let the man go through. <laughs> let the man go through. Simon Le Bon Bon. <laughs> Too fat, fat, oh. you must cut lean. <laughs> Gotta take the elevator to the mezzanine, son. Simon Le Bon Bon. Anyway, that's how that song's going. Uh, <laughs> all right, one. let's. Oh man, let's do the demolition, bull. Yeah, Vertigo. Uh, do the demolition. Um. Uh, again, as we discussed before, one of a couple of songs uh, named after Hitchcock albums or no. albums, you know, Hitchcock albums when he was had a couple of turntables. Yeah, or when he was doing his spoken word tour. Yeah, like Jello <laughs> Biafra. Yeah, yeah, uh, like, yeah, that, yeah, that tight 30 that he used to pull off. Good evening. Drop <laughs> the <laughs> bass. <laughs> All right, so on the count of three, let's do Vertigo. <laughs> three, two, one, Vertigo. <laughs> you sure he's not Scottish? Um, <laughs> kind of sounds like me. He probably, it, it looks like he ate a Scottish lad. Um, you think he's a, you think he's a, the art template for Fat Bastard? <laughs> I'm partially, you know? <laughs> I, <laughs> but I, I like the thing I'm most fascinated by with Hitchcock. Welcome back, everyone mm-hmm. who is not. A Hi, we, 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 well, I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge tangent. The song is called Vertigo, so yeah. bear with us, people. But the thing I find most fascinating about Hitchcock is the relationship with his actual wife. Yeah, who tolerated his obvious crushes on these, you know, young blonde women. Yeah, and it, I, like I'm. I, I'm eternally interested in her perspective on like he's a genius, mm-hmm. you know. I can he's not really acting on this. It's just the these kind of emotional affairs that he's having, and yeah. I guess I can live with that because I'm also kind of creating art alongside him to some degree. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, th- I, th- I find it fascinating. Could you could you see Quentin Tarantino ever be married? Sure. To who? <laughs> like, like someone with long feet. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He, a, there, a there's clown. a guy that. <laughs> <laughs> Six of them coming at the back of a mini. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, like, <laughs> like you know, there's, there's, there's a guy who has, like, a very distinct image of what he likes and his females. Like, he empowers the fuck out of them in movies, but. He likes certain shots, and he's he is not. He doesn't hide that shit. You know, it's not under yeah. it's not under layers like that's a guy. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a and you would always like Hitchcock, especially was like the, there's a guy who almost destroyed himself trying to cl- weirdly claw back a reputation, which I mean, in the short term, might have been like dented but there's a reason like he like we there's a reason his name is in the lexicon of music dis- movie descriptions and that's not just because he did cycle oh you know what sure. i mean yeah yeah yeah. that's no. what i mean i'd like his, his career like it was maybe taking a slight nose turn but that's more to do with audiences than it was to do with his filmmaking right and also you're talking about what the last one or two weren't as good as yeah yeah 
decades of incredible movies yeah yeah so. like, like like genre defining cinema yeah but yeah like that's if the, uh, my big takeaway for anyone that hasn't done this and uh, wants to try to revisit if you if you do one thing in the next week sit down and watch frenzy i might yeah came out in the, came out in the 70s um it's one of his last movies he made that was his first movie back in britain in a long time and it is a straight up sleazy slasher movie the four slashers and i shit you not it is uncomfortable to watch in the best possible way as you spend that whole movie with a serial killer and instead of like the cycle thing where it like, isn't he isn't he isn't he no we like we see him strangle the fuck out of everyone so enjoy it's really good it's really good. i love it i think it's like i buy it it's, it's a grimy movie <laughs> Yeah, it really is. All right, um, well, let's yeah. continue our journey through this this album. Yes. And next up is a song called So Misled. Which is what people will be saying when they come back after seeing Friends and going, Duncan, it's not that bad. <laughs> like, it's, you have been <laughs> so misled. Yes. Um, all right, let's let's dive into this one on the count of three. Three, two, one, misled. we just talked about james brown all the way over that song listeners like, I, I get the feel this is the trend that we do with every duran duran conversation we have we start so on point uh-huh and then by the last couple of songs we're like buses those are weird aren't they like <laughs> you, know. you ever notice that buses did a run at night <laughs> i like, I like simon Le bon bon. observational comedy <laughs> You ever notice how wild boys are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, certainly. You ever seen those girls on film? Ever, <laughs> I mean, ever talk to a snake and all he can talk about is the union he's in? Sorry, scab snake bastards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that was so misled. Yep. And I mean, it's a good song. It, it, it's a good song. It's a good funk song. It, it, I don't yeah. think there's anything exceptional about it. Hundred percent. Apart from the drumming, the drumming yeah. is great in that song. Bass. I mean, we shouldn't even need to mention that bass. The bass line in it's really good. Vocally, it's it's the least interesting Le Bon track we've heard thus far. I think. Yeah. And the synths are just kind of doing their thing. And when I say least interesting, it's it's perfectly fine, but it doesn't right. do anything to make it memorable. All right, so let's just move on to a personal favorite of mine. Let's do it, boy. I'm ready to meet him with you. Meet El Presidente on the count of three. Viva! El Presidente! One. Hola. What a, what a great song. Meet El Presidente is such a great song. Yeah. And I, again, just it's, it's freewheeling, it's fun, it's funky. You've got background singers having a good time. Simon Le Bon is, is having a good time. It's the sort of song you want to take to the bar and have a few drinks with, get a bit frisky. Mm -hmm. There's no strings, Bo. There's no strings in no. that song. That, El, <laughs> Meet El Presidente is the kind of song that you want to pick you up at the airport. Because, yeah. <laughs> because you know you're stopping for a drink before you get wherever you're going. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever notice when the thing you're working on comes undone? <laughs> ever, what is the deal? You ever notice how ordinary the world is? <laughs> I don't want this. I want, I want this. I will live on like you know, tight 10 on <laughs> right. Like, train of thought on how he comes up with it. I do like the idea that every single song starts off with him just observationally you ever wonder how Yeah, and then like, who are the marketing geniuses who came up with Rio am I right <laughs> wait a second anyway um, yeah Mino oh, Presidente yeah. is fucking amazing um, yes so next up is a shorter the... song on the album Shortest song, penultimate song on the album. Uh, a real bummer of a song. 
Yeah, that they bring it that like you you've just had that you've had that like you've been in the conga line in the previous song and now it's like you 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 instantly realize that you done fucked up. Yeah. And uh the winter marches on. Winter marches yeah. on, Duncan. Yes, it does. <laughs> like winter is coming. Yes, it is. And I'm I'm with you. I think George R. R. Martin stole that from yeah. here. Uh, but, We're on to you, George. That's why you've not released your new book yet. We're coming for you. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, the big three. Yep. N- nothing fancy here. We're getting getting deep on this one. So going deep. Uh, on the count of three, let us march on. Mm. Three, two, one. Winter. Naval gazing about buses showing up or anything. Yeah. This is just. Uh, all right. So, uh, anything we want to say about winter marches on before we march on to the next song? It's just it's boring. It's kind of a boring song. Yeah, it, it has no like like real energy or movement behind it, and it just kind of me. It's a meandering song. It's like a December song without all the fun irony. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you're welcome for that, listeners. <laughs> just, just walk around with that one in your pocket when somebody is like, well, I don't know how to describe this. Say it's like a December song without the irony. And, uh, and credit Bo for it. Yeah. I would say a wise man once said, a wise educator once told me. A, well, yeah, an edutainer. Edutainer. Once, once said to me. Um, all right, but so let's uh let's close this thing out with a bang. Yeah, and the, the final the final track is proposition, and uh, let's hit it on the count of three. So three, two, one, proposition. Uh, He's always looked like a bit of a villain. So yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we've all got our flea stories, you know. <laughs> we've all had that one weekend with flea that he certainly doesn't remember, and you only have written accounts of in local newspapers yeah. <laughs> um but that is that is proposition which is a a a perfectly fine way to end the album although w- after discussing ending with Miguel presidente let's oh, be honest I mean, that's should really i should have uh, yeah. there, was a, there was a missed trick there had me and bull been there that's how that would have finished should, it should and have, you been. have all thanked us for it should have been um but notorious is a great record Mm-hmm. And and it, again, the thing that makes it most interesting to me is is them kind of exploring all these kind of you know funk possibilities in Duran Duran that don't really exist on the other yep. records. So it, 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 like it's them playing with a new set of toys, and it's fun. It's a really fun record. Like it, it's got some notable downside to it uh, with a few yeah. of the tracks, but it's still. Like it's it's the songs you don't expect to be great. Um, like Hold Me and Meet El Presidente and stuff like that, where yeah. you're like, Why wasn't this a single? This is a great song or skin trade, you know? Um mm-hmm. so it, one of the the rare Duran Duran albums where as much of a banger as Notorious is, and it is, mm-hmm. um, the the real hidden gems of this record are are totally worthwhile and you know. It's it, and also notable for not having a 17 minute song about a <laughs> carriage ride or something. And this, it's also worth saying the the group of musicians that are predominantly involved with this one um, carry on with the band like mm-hmm. through this one. So um, the kind of more resident guitarist on here, Warren Chichurio. Um, and Steve Ferrone, they both carry on through. So they, they appear on the next album. So they become part of the team uh, with the main driving force of the, the music still by the, the, the big three. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that'll, that'll be where we're heading and I'm trying to remember the name of the album now. It's a big thing, big thing. I think so. I'll, I'll, I'll verify. I'll tell you what, uh, while I'm verifying. You verify. Uh, why don't you tell people where you can find... Oh, I like it other stuff from you operation stall yeah. um please come and check out podcasts under the stairs things are getting busy summer series is around the corner bull will be in that in the mix 
doing things and talking movies. But yeah, we have 10 weeks and 40 episodes um, of podcasts coming at your way, kicking off end of July, uh, taking you right up to the 1st of October. Um, so yeah, Podcast Under the Stairs is the main one. You can check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. But also check out that Teapots Collective, which has shows like Where to Begin With, which is currently doing a run on uh, neo-noir and neo-noir um movies uh we're also doing uh, chronicle which is looking at european horror movies with guest hosts this season we're doing a little bit of opera omnia which is coming back i promise it's coming back <laughs> um i keep getting asked questions about it and it was almost back and then i lost my voice so that's why that got delayed and doing the nasty which is looking at the section three video nasties uh with my buddy mark ball all of it can be found at teapotscast.com Great. Uh, you are correct. Big Thing is the next album we will be doing. But we will be doing that, ladies and jelly spoons, after we do a bunch of Pink Panther movies. So stick around for that. Yeah, I think we'll do a, we'll do a few of them, then we'll take a break and do Duran Duran and then come back. I think logically we're maybe where Peter Sellers steps out. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. Uh, we'll take a break there and then we'll come back and do the, the stuff that's kind of post-Sellers. Uh, but yeah, the first one we'll be doing is the Pink Panther from 1963, where Peter Sellers, um, uh, uh, as Inspector Clouseau, is he background character, which yeah. um, isn't, he's predominantly not involved in. It. Also, uh, is directed, as most of the movies were, by the late, great Blake Edwards, uh, who I think has passed on. <laughs> I, I'm pretty Hopefully. sure. <laughs> uh, he may better have, who was in real life married to... Dame Judy Dench. No... Uh, Dame's right though. Dame, Millie Poppins. I know, I know who it is. I can't think of her Julie name. Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. Yeah, I was close. Julie <laughs> Dench is nothing like Julie Andrews. It's pretty close. Um, <laughs> they're English. They're small English women. That they're talk. old, small English women, and and they both uh, have had wild sex with Dick Van Dyke. You bet your bet your bet your bet your you marry Poppins. I do marry Poppins. He's a penguin. <laughs> Who ever saw such a thing as a Jesse penguin? Uh, oh, that's such a bad accent. Uh, <laughs> so, um, come back uh, in two weeks to check that out. Also, please, <laughs> please. And uh, and I haven't seen a lot of these movies, as I mentioned, so I'm I'm excited to to dig into it, and uh, and that's gonna do it for this time. Uh, go over to legionpodcast.com. You can find stuff for me, and then <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll be back in yeah. So if you're watching this, two weeks will be Pink Panther. If you're listening to this, one week will be the video version of Pink Panther, and then two weeks will be the audio version. So yeah, we're um, live doing stuff for you in real time. Do it, doing it right, doing it do right. It. Do it live, God damn it! Uh, Fucking thing sucks. And so there is nothing left to to say in this episode, but to say to my good friend Duncan, say something nice about Duran Duran, Duncan. Say something nice about Duran Duran, Duncan. That doesn't. No. Yes. All right. <laughs> Notorious. No. No. Notorious, notorious. I'll tell you right now, as soon as we hit stop here, me and El Presidente are going to meet, if you know what I mean. Oh. Hello. I don't know. All right. Bye, everybody. Masturbation joke, Bo. Oh. Bye. I oh, know. <laughs>